Oh, hello, my fellow penguins. Look what I got. Remember waddling around as a little penguin, sliding into igloo parties, playing games, and chatting with friends in Club Penguin's snowy paradise? For a generation, Club Penguin was more than a game. It was a digital homeland where countless friendships and memories were forged. You heard echoes. So, when Disney shut it down in 2017, many fans were left wondering, why would they kill something so magical? Disney claimed it was a matter of outdated technology and declining users. But what if there's more to the story? Let's dive into the hidden corners of Club Penguin's icy world and see what Disney might not want you to know. Warning, this isn't just about penguins and puffles. There's money, missed opportunities, even arrests, and the stakes are way higher than you'd think. Disney says Club Penguin was losing users. But was that the whole truth? Back in 2007, Disney acquired Club Penguin for a whopping $700 million, and it seemed like the little penguins were about to make it big. But almost immediately, Disney started tweaking the game, adding features that required premium memberships and sprinkling in Disney branding. Soon, players noticed that Club Penguin had lost a bit of its charm. Critics claim that Disney's heavy-handed focus on monetization and branding felt like they were wringing money out of the game at the expense of its soul. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. What if Club Penguin's decline wasn't just a natural drift away from the platform, but a slow undoing triggered by corporate decisions? Disney may have been testing if it could extract profits by making Club Penguin a cash cow. But with kids flocking to mobile games and newer platforms, this strategy might have backfired, turning Club Penguin's playful world into a ghost town. The official reason Disney gave for shutting down Club Penguin? Technology issues, of course. Built on Adobe Flash, Club Penguin became incompatible with modern browsers as Flash started to phase out. But here's the kicker. Other popular games of the era migrated to newer platforms, updating with HTML5 to keep up with the times. So why didn't Disney invest in a new tech upgrade for Club Penguin? The answer may lie in Disney's strategic decisions. By 2017, Disney was shifting gears toward a new crown jewel, Disney Plus, and investing in a game aimed at kids might have looked like small potatoes next to the glitter of a streaming service. Club Penguin could have survived with some tech love, but Disney chose to pull the plug, leaving its Penguin fans out in the cold. Fans weren't ready to say goodbye. Within months of Club Penguin shutting down, fan servers like Club Penguin Rewritten popped up, meticulously recreating the game's snowy wonderland. These servers attracted millions of fans who missed waddling around, but Disney wasn't impressed. In 2022, Disney, backed by London's police intellectual property crime unit, shut down Club Penguin Rewritten, even arresting three people involved. Sure, Disney cited copyright infringement, but the crackdown raises questions. Why was Disney going to such lengths to obliterate these fan servers? Some speculate that Disney wanted to quash any fan-made iterations that could undermine their control over Club Penguin's brand. Fans saw Club Penguin rewritten as a tribute, but Disney saw it as a direct challenge to their intellectual property. It seems Disney wanted to make sure Club Penguin stayed buried if they couldn't fully control it. Disney also had another darker reason to shut down the fan-run Club Penguin servers. Some had devolved into virtual lawlessness. Take Club Penguin Online, a clone notorious for its lack of moderation. Without Disney's strict oversight, explicit content, including inappropriate language and even racial slurs, ran rampant on the site, exposing young players to disturbing behavior. And it didn't stop there. One person associated with the fan server was even arrested for allegedly possessing child abuse images. These safety risks brought unwanted attention to Disney's brand. For Disney, the Club Penguin fan clones turned into a PR nightmare. By putting these servers to bed, Disney could prevent future risks that threatened to tarnish its carefully curated, family-friendly reputation. Still, it's troubling that the end of Club Penguin left a space that fan servers struggled and ultimately failed to moderate. Here's something surprising. Despite Club Penguin's nostalgic power, Disney chose not to leverage it. Instead of revamping or relaunching Club Penguin, Disney ended it. 
surprising even loyal fans who would have gladly revisited their childhood penguin adventures. Think about it, Nintendo uses nostalgia to keep Mario fresh and relevant. Why didn't Disney do the same with Club Penguin? Perhaps to Disney, Club Penguin was just another product in the rearview mirror. But many fans believe Disney missed a major opportunity to capture a new audience by making Club Penguin nostalgic for returning fans or even as a retro mobile game. Disney, however, moved on, leaving Club Penguin as a relic rather than capitalizing on its sentimental value. Let's put the pieces together. Disney closed Club Penguin, citing technical and engagement issues, refused to revive it even though fans were desperate and pursued legal action to shut down fan servers when moderation issues surfaced. Could all of this have been a calculated move to protect Disney's family-friendly image? By pulling Club Penguin and clamping down on fan servers, Disney distanced itself from any potential negative publicity. For Disney, maintaining control over the narrative may have outweighed the benefits of keeping Club Penguin alive rather than risk a tarnished image from unmoderated clones and unregulated fan servers. They cut Club Penguin off entirely, ensuring no unexpected scandal could come back to bite them. 